Are you Rush? How may I help you? Yes, this is Dickel I Flock it. You called and left a message for me about suing me. Just a second, please stay online. This is Officer Eric Brown from the IRS. How may I help you? Yes, Mr. Brown. This is Dickel at Flockett. Sir, I'm putting your call on hold. I'm getting my uh, technician to find out what the problem is. Just a second, okay? Boy, what a bunch of red tape. Thank you for holding the line. This is Officer Jeff Doss. How may I help you? Tell me your last name again. At Lock it. Yeah, so according to the section 101, the amount is still outstanding under your new name, that means you're not paid yet. It will be a $1,700. For that reason, the local authorities will come to your doorstep with an arrest warrant. $1,700? Yes. So what do you want to do? You want to pay this payment or what? So, who are you? Sir, I'm the officer. My name is Jeff Dawson. So what do you want to do? You want to pay this payment or what? So do you have a cash in hand right now, $1,700? Well, I got three bucks. Sorry? $1,700. Well, maybe I could raise it. Just go to the Walmart and let me know once you reach the Walmart in the parking lot, okay? Okay. Give me one hour, okay? Yes. Oh, look. There's Buzz's wallet. Maybe I can use his credit cards and go to the ATM and get out $1,700 in cash. After I pay the IRS, I'll just put the cards back. They'll never be the wiser. <laughs> well, hello, everybody. Welcome to part six of this 1932 mystery, Cathedral Radio. As you can see there, there's the chassis. I've installed the transformer and the tuning cap and the Philco switch on here. Now I had to put the switch in uh, before I put this on there because uh, this won't come out unless I take this off and this is a pain in the butt uh, to remove so I put that in there. Let me show you uh, what I did here. I cut down some of the, uh, the metal here so I could slide it up and over a little bit and then uh, had to redrill some holes here so you see these screws here got some washers on them here's the tuning cap now I got uh, some new wires on here this is for the grid cap on one of the tubes nice red wire so I'm going to be working on the chassis on this episode chances and get this uh, wired in permanently and who knows maybe later in the episode we'll power it up again and see if it still works and I'll show you uh, the B plus uh, modification that uh, Brendan that's John from Arkansas's mentor old Brendan uh, he came up with a mod so I can reduce the uh, B plus voltage to 240 remember it was about 300 anyway I'll show you that so I'm gonna be working on here we'll do a little cabinet work I'll show you my uh, progress with that this looks like it's gonna be a pretty interesting episode so I hope you stick around pull up a chair have a cool drink and uh, enjoy it okay let's just test this switch here this is a Philco switch and you saw it came into that box. It's a new old stock. Look at these uh, points here where you solder to. These have never been soldered to. Can you believe that? No. A new old stock. Oh, how very thrilling. It says uh, 4157 Philco. I'll have to find out uh, what kind of Philco this goes on here. But anyway, it's going to go on my radio. So. Hell yeah. Let's just test it here. Should be 10K. Time for the test! Let's turn it on. No matter what happens, don't panic. 9.8. Cool. Let's just swap sides here. Nice. 
Perfect. Perfect. Now you're probably wondering uh, if I'm going to leave these. I'm not going to leave these. All these are going to be taken out. They were only in there uh, to keep it uh, in place because I didn't have enough clamps to clamp it. And those things, are, they come out real easy. They're, they're not that long and uh, I can just pull them out. And I'll just put some uh, wood filler in here and smooth it down. But I'm going to put a nice veneer coating around here. So this is actually going to look pretty nice. Let's just take a quick look at this uh, manual here. Read me a book, would you, Dad? Dad? It's nice to have this so you don't have to uh, go on the internet and look. It's a lot easier just to look up this stuff when you need something real fast. Open your textbooks to chapter three. Good stuff. It's from 1966. Very good year. Looks like cleanup on aisle four. Well, there's the speaker. I'm gonna work on that. Oh, brother. I'm gonna fix that. And you've probably seen enough of videos, people fixing speakers, so. I'm going to uh, just do it and then I'll show you what it looks like after it's completed. And hopefully we'll test it later in the episode. Let's just get up close and personal to this uh, new dial escutcheon I got. As you can see it says Freshman Products. So this is the escutcheon from a, uh, a Belmont. Now the Freshman Company had gone out of business and it was bought, I don't know if Belmont bought it. But a lot of companies went bankrupt in the late 20s and 30s. So anyway, the, they used this brand name on the, the Belmont because we saw a picture of it. Hello, gorgeous. This thing looks uh, to be in pretty good condition. Who knows, this might be the very escutcheon that came off uh, mine. We don't know. So this doesn't prove that uh, what I've got is a, is a Belmont. It only goes to prove that I've got a escutcheon that will fit on it. <laughs> and uh, I'm not going to polish this up a little bit. I'm going to clean it up, but uh, I'm going to leave that patina on there. Good show. Jolly good show, Major. This here is the original brace that was in there. And I'm going to use this original brace on the uh, the new one here so that'll be kind of neat using part of the original uh, cabinet onto the new one you see originally they had these glue blocks glued on here like that what I'm gonna do is instead of glue blocks on here I'm gonna put this on here so I've sanded these smooth here on both sides this old piece here took a lot of gluing because it was just coming apart. So anyway, this is going to go here. Instead of a glue block, I'm going to use that as the glue block. I'll get tied against the other one. You dog, you! And that'll give me a surface to put this on here. the humanity. This is going to come almost right up to uh, the end of, of this piece and that's the way the picture is and uh, so I got this nicely uh, glued in here the sides will come together real nice. My only problem is there's speaker holes here where the speaker goes mm -hmm. and uh, I'm gonna might have to uh, cut a little bit in here. Okay, I've trimmed this part right around here, so when that's uh, glued on there like that, there's gonna be room for those screw holes here. Mm -hmm. Let's see how it's gonna line up when I got it uh, on the cabinet here. Okay, with this piece in here, when that's glued in there, Got a lot of space here now. When I get this in here. Yes, it's very good. 
it just clears it here so that's going to work out just fine so i'm going to glue that on right now but uh, i can't do anything else on this until i get all the veneer glued on here so that's going to take a while so we'll be doing that uh, probably in the next episode okay here's these uh, capacitors here these were I think this was a dual 0.1 and one of these was a dual 0.1 and 0.25 so these things are, are riveted to the chassis here and I've got to remove these so I'll have room for some uh, terminal strips to put these caps in there so I'm going to drill these out and we'll come back and uh, put some uh, strips on it I think this is the dual 0.1s I cut it open here. Let's see if we can unwind it. There's the core. <laughs> well, at the beginning of the video, I said I was going to do more uh, chassis work, but uh, I'm really interested in seeing if I can get this to work here. So we're going to concentrate on this front here. I made this out of uh, tracing paper, and I just traced uh, everything on here with these lines. And if you've been wondering how I'm going to put the veneer on here, like just put it all on one sheet, nope. Huh? I figure my best bet is to cut them out individually. So this is going to be my template. And what I want to do right now is cut this piece here, which is this piece. And see if I can do that. And then uh, glue it on there. Now the only veneer I've got that I want to use is this walnut veneer and it's not long enough here so I'm going to have to cut it in half so I'll have one side here and one side here so I want to uh, see if this will work because uh, the, the most important thing on this front here is this uh, groove that runs along here Groovy. now there's no way I can recreate that uh, with a, a new veneer on top of it why not so I'm going to use the existing one and once the veneer looks halfway decent on there I'm going to use some uh, very dark uh, stain or some type of an ink and just put put it in here so this will be black like it's supposed to be so that's the plan anyway so let me see if I can get this done okay there it is cut that out now what I have to do is to cut that off here. Now I had to join these two uh, veneers here because I don't have anything long enough. But uh, I'm going to split it so I get half here and half here. So this is not going to be easy. I'm going to have to tape this down and I'll do that off camera and I'll come back with the final thing and then we can glue it on there. Don't go away. You know, I'm debating whether I should put the black stripe on here before I put glue it on there but I'm gonna try this glue it first and then see if I can apply it so I'm going to use this uh, cold press for veneer tight bond I was debating whether to use contact cement but I figure once I put the contact cement piece down, I can't move it. With this, I can uh, move it in case it's not quite lined up. Too much glue will 
cause a lot of squeeze out. With this, I have the uh, luxury of lining this top part up with, with the groove and either going up or down because I got a little bit more extra down here. And that really comes in handy if you can move it. This is going to be perfect, you understand? Straight down the line. All right, I'm not going to do the second one. I'm going to just clamp this down. And as you can see, this is going to take a while because I'm going to stick it in there overnight. And then if you consider it out, one piece here, one piece here, one, two, three, four, five. It's going to take a couple weeks to get it all done. Okay. Well, I thought I'd show you my progress on the speaker repair. And uh, I almost got it done. As you know, it was in pretty bad shape. And I wasn't going to show me repairing it, but uh, since I'm almost done with it, for those of you out there who's never seen a, a speaker repair, then uh, I figured I'd just show this. Here's a couple pictures uh, I took uh, as I was going along here. I've heard of realism in pictures, JB, but this is ridiculous. Uh, is there any new pictures of Myrna Loy in there? Uh, she's my favorite picture star. Now what I use is, I use this uh, Aline's uh, Tacky Glue mixed with water. And for patches, like uh, this patch here, I use a uh, coffee filter paper so I'm just gonna get a, uh, a patch for here make sure it'll fit over the hole and what I do is I soak it in the glue and this is not my idea I've seen this on YouTube soak it up and you put the patch over the hole, if I can get it there. It likes to stick to my fingers. And I like to use a uh, toothpick as a tool. That looks like a toothpick, man. Now you want the glue a little bit thin, so you, so you use water to thin it out. Woo! Boy, that's pretty, huh? So when it dries, it's nice and firm like that. <laughs> I don't know how this is going to sound like because of this surround part was so damaged, but uh, it didn't sound that bad after it was all ripped, so it'll probably work. Like, as for suggestions, not sarcasm. I'm just going to redo some of this I did last night. Now that's perfect. Don't touch nothing. All right, that's how I do it. When last we left this uh, front here, I was gluing the veneer on. And I'm going to show you what it looks like here. Ready? Ah! Got both of them on here. I had to put some uh, wood putty in here because there was a little bit of gap on there. But I think that looks pretty good. It's going to take a whole lot of work to get this rest of this done here. Long time. Many hours. But this gives you an idea what it's going to look like. Once this is stained and lacquered, it's going to look beautiful. Okay, well here is uh, the finished uh, speaker all patched up. Oh brother. Don't look pretty, but uh, I guess it'll work alright. Here's uh, the underside of the chassis with the uh, transformer wired up. I took a few pictures uh, as I was doing that, so let's take a look at those now. I, I gotta go pee. I gotta go potty. And I put in these terminal strips and put in the caps here. 
And one thing I wanted to explain here is uh, we're using a, a 5K power resistor to reduce the B plus voltage. This was Brendan's idea. It seemed to work pretty good. I was playing around with different uh, resistors and came up with a combination of a 5K that works the best. Right now uh, we're getting 240 B plus. That's right on the money. But to show you what the B plus actually is before it goes into that uh, power resistor, be careful. I want to show it right here. So I can get the wire on that. Look at that. 393. Holy mackerel. And I'm running this at 110 volts. So we had to uh, isolate the B plus line and I had to cut a couple of wires. So everything is before and after. These filter caps are before, as you can see. And it goes through here and uh, then the B plus line picks up right here at 240. So, so many thanks to Brendan for uh, getting that solution taken care of. You're welcome. So, you know, I was playing a uh, Guy Lombardo uh, tune with just the beginning of it. I like to uh, play the rest of that and uh, give you a little test on how the speaker sounds and, and the radio. So here goes Guy Lombardo. Thank you, Guy Lombardo. You're welcome. I might take off a couple weeks, maybe longer. I've got a lot of stuff to do. So until we meet again, this is Buzz. Thanks for watching. This conversation can serve no purpose anymore. Goodbye. <laughs>